Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. And in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's going to be teaching you a beautiful classical piece, classical piece called A Little Flower. Now, this was a tune that I actually discovered in a really cool way. My friend Nikki sent me this video a couple years ago. So as you can see, she played it beautifully. And what was really cool too was that she played it on a street piano. So she got to entertain folks around her as well. But I will say this, this was the first time I ever heard the tune and I was absolutely just blown away. Anytime somebody sends me a tune, it's the first time I hear it and it's a great melody like this song has. It is like a special treat and it's just something that I just, I, I love. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And I really, really love this tune because of that melody. It has a beautiful A melody and a bit of a haunting vibe to it as well, I would say. It's a little bit of a haunting feel to it. And the B melody is super duper cool as well. It's just a great composition. Now, I have to give props too to Steven because he transposed it onto the ukulele so, so well. So originally it is a piano piece, but it works so, so well for the low G ukulele. Now let's take a step back and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Steven's gonna be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement. But if you do wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for a little flower. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab here. Now this is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this tune that much easier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this. Don't forget to grab the low G ukulele and I'll catch you at the end of the lesson. Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson on A Little Flower by Cornelius Gurlitt, both of which you may have never heard of before. And in case you haven't, Cornelius Gurlitt was a German composer during my favourite period of music, the Romantic Era. And although he wasn't perhaps one of the more famous composers of the time, he was part of a circle of friends that included Johannes Brahms and Robert Schumann, so he certainly kept good company. This little piece in particular I think is very representative of Rome romantic era music. This was a time when composers rebelled against the constraints of the classical period. The music became much more expressive and inventive. This short little piece is really pretty, but it has some quite interesting harmonic progressions that also give it quite an edgy sound. I think it's brilliant. And although it is relatively short and it doesn't look as though there are many notes to learn here, it is actually deceptively tricky, um, especially for the left hand. So for that reason, this this lesson is going to be great for working on your left hand dexterity and movement up and down the fretboard as well. So during the lesson we'll focus mostly on what the left hand is doing and how to make efficient and clean transitions between some of these tricky chord changes. We'll also look at how to use dynamics to add some expression to our performance of the piece. So if you're not familiar with dynamics it would definitely be worth checking out this lesson from the classical ukulele course before diving into this piece. So when you're ready make sure you've got your low G ukulele and let's get into this. So this piece is in 3-4 time, so we have three quarter note beats to each measure. And we're aiming for a fairly brisk tempo of 120 BPM, which will sound something like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so measures 1 and 2 should sound like this. And then if I play those again a little slower, Okay, 
Okay, so measure one, if we look at the little dynamic symbol there, you can see the symbol P, meaning piano. So we're playing this first section softly. Okay, so a little bit quieter than kind of normal volume. And we're playing the rhythm here for measure one, one, two, and three. Okay, so beat one is this A minor chord where we'll hold the G string with the first finger and then the A string with the third finger. And then we pick both those strings together on beat one. Okay, let the ring for a beat, then on beat two, we're gonna play this open C string whilst holding these two fingers still on. So we'll pick that open C on beat two, but this is just a little bit of harmony, so this isn't melody. So that note there that we just played, that open C, we'll just play that a touch softer so we don't hear it too loud. Then the and after beat two, we've got another melody note, so we're gonna hit that a little bit louder, and that's the A string at the second fret. So whilst leaving the first finger on, We'll just drop the second finger onto the A string of the second, take the third finger off and then pick that A string of the second on the end after beat two. And then on beat three, we're gonna take that finger we've just put on off so we can play the open A and the open E together, a little double stop there, so two fingers together and pick those on beat three. So just that measure one. One, two and three. And then into measure two, we're going to this E chord. So we're gonna bring this first finger up to the fourth fret and then put it on and bar across the entire fourth fret. Fourth fret. So all four strings being barred there. Then the pinky is gonna take the A string at the eighth fret, sorry, the seventh fret. And then we're gonna pick the A string and the E string together. So a double stop on beat one. And then we're just playing on the beat for this measure. So beat two, we then pick the G string at the fourth. This is all now part of our chord that we're holding. So we pick the G string on beat two. A little bit softer again, because that isn't melody. That's just a bass note there. And then the same on beat three. This is a little bit softer because it's just harmony. So the C string at the fourth, pick that softly on beat three. So that measure there, just that first note there being melody everything else a bit quieter. So again, those two measures together. Brill. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. One, two, three. So on to measures three and four now, they should sound like this. So the rhythm for both these measures is the same as the previous two. So we're playing one, two, and three, one, two, three. So beat one of this measure three is this kind of A7 chord, but we're just holding the A string at the fourth with the pinky and the open G playing those two strings together on beat one. If we think about where we were at the end of measure two, we were holding this E chord. So all we're gonna do to get into this A7 shape is take the bar off and bring this fourth finger down to the fourth fret. So those two notes together on beat one. And then on beat two, we're gonna play this G string at the second fret. The first finger will take that. So we'll pick that a little bit softer because that one is just a bass note on beat two there. Then the and after beat two, we're back to melody. So we wanna make sure we hear this a little bit louder. And this is gonna be the A string at the second. So pinky comes off, second finger takes that A string at the second and we pick that on the end after beat two, but we'll leave that first finger on so that A note there can just ring over as we play that uh, A string of the second. And then on to beat three, we're gonna play the open A with the open E. So we'll just take that second finger off and play that double stop there of those two open strings together on beat three. But again, that open A is part of that double stop. That open A is melody, so we wanna hear that. So that measure three, once again, slower okay then into measure four we have this D minor chord but it's a bit of a cheeky one it's quite a stretch here to get into this shape so in terms of like left hand dexterity like I mentioned at the beginning and kind of just the stretch of your fingers this is quite a tricky little shape to hold because we want to keep that first finger on at the A string uh, sorry the G string at the second fret that A note but then we want to add the third finger 
to the C string at the fifth. So even that there is a bit of a stretch. And then the pinky wants to go on there to the A string at the fifth. And then we'll pick those two notes together on beat one. But like I say, we're leaving that first finger on there ringing from the previous measure. So just the A and the C string on beat one. Then on beat two, we're gonna hit that G string second, which we've left on there from the previous measure. So a little gentle thumb tap of that. And then the next note is also harmony, so we don't want to hear it too loud. The way we're going to get to that is keep the first finger on, keep the pinky on, but take the third finger off as we then flatten this first finger down into a kind of hinge bar so that it's fretting the G string, but also frets the C string at the second fret as well. And then we just pick that C string at the second, fairly softly, because it's just harmony on beat three. So a tricky little measure that one for the left hand. If I show you it once again. Okay, and then with measure three. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. One two, three. So on two measures five and six now, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure five, we're playing the rhythm here, one, two, and three, just like we were in measure one and measure three. Beat one is this A minor chord of the A string, the third, with the open E, so double stop together there on beat one. As we're playing that though, we wanna think about getting this first finger comfortable on that G string at the second, because at the end of the previous measure, measure four, it was doing this kind of awkward flattened hinge bar while the fourth finger was on the fifth fret there. So that's where we were at the end of measure four. As we come into measure five, we're gonna take the pinky off, bring that third finger onto that A string at the third, but then just lift up this little half bar so that the finger's just normally fretting that G string at the second fret. I'm not picking that on beat one, we're just getting it ready. On beat one, like we've just looked at, we're playing the open A, sorry, the A string at the third with the open E. But then on beat two, now we want this gentle tap of the G string at the second. So again, just a bass note, not melody, so a little bit softer. And then on the and after beat two, we're back to a melody note, which is A string at the second. So third finger comes off, second finger takes that A string at the second, and we pick that on the end after beat two. And then on beat three, whilst leaving the first finger on still, we'll take that second finger off and play the open A with the open C on beat three. And again, that open A is our melody note. So just that measure five, And then into measure six, we're playing that same rhythm again of one, two, and three. So beat one, we're moving now to this A diminished chord. So this first finger still stays on. We've had that on for a while now, but we keep it on for this measure. And then the third and the fourth fingers take the A and the C string at the third fret. So beat one is just those two strings together, the A string and the C string. And then on beat two, we hit that G string at the second again a little bit softer because it isn't melody. And then same as the previous measure, drop this A string down to the second fret, but we'll leave the third finger on as we do that. So just take the pinky off and then play that melody note of A string second on the end after beat two and then on beat three, take that second finger off and the third finger off and play the open A and the open C to complete that measure. And again, like before, that open A is melody. So just that measure six. Okay, and then with measure five. Nice. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. One, two, three. On two measures seven and eight, they should sound like this.
Okay, so although that sounds quite simple, again, that's quite tricky for the left hand in terms of kind of the stretch that we've got to do to get these notes nice and clean. So measure seven, we're just playing the rhythm one, two, three. Beat one to begin with is okay, because we're just playing this double stop of E string fourth with the C string fourth. So we play those two strings together on beat one that E string fourth being melody, so we make sure that we hear that. But then on beat two, we now want to come to this G string at the first fret. And this is a bit of a stretch, this is a bit awkward, because we want to keep the pressure on these two fingers so that those notes can carry on ringing as we play this G string at the first. So the first finger will take that G string at the first. And as I say, that there is a bit of an awkward stretch. If you're finding that difficult, don't worry about it, that is difficult. I mean, you might be better than me at this, you might have very good left hand dexterity or longer fingers, you might be thinking, what, you're on about your madman, that is absolutely fine, but if you are struggling with it, I'd expect you to, don't worry about it, persevere with it, stick with it, just keep kind of stretching the fingers out, get in that position, and eventually that will come, okay? So beat two, as I say, is that G string at the first fret, just a little gentle bass string tap though, don't want to hear that too loud. Then on beat three, again a little bit tricky, we want to bring this second finger now onto the G string of the fourth fret. So the first finger will come off as we do that, but then it is a bit of a squeeze to get all three fingers on that fourth fret and all sounding nice and clean. Um, but as I say, just persevere with it, stick with it, eventually you will get it. So beat three, as I say, is that G string of the fourth. Again, just a gentle bass string tap there on beat three. Looks very simple, but feels pretty tricky. So then into measure eight, same rhythm, one, two, three. Leaving all that on, beat one is gonna be the A string at the second fret, so the first finger will take that, and then we just pick that single note on beat one, but that's melody, so a touch louder. And then on beat two, a harmony note, so a little bit softer of this E string at the fourth, which we're holding here already. So pick that on beat two. And then on beat three, we'll play this open E, but as we play this open E, we'll take all the fingers off, so that as we're playing it, we can be thinking about getting the hand into this A minor position, because at the end of this measure eight, we're gonna go back to the start and repeat measure one. So we wanna be ready to play that A minor once again. So as you play beat three of measure eight, take all the fingers off, think about moving them into position as you play that open E. And that'll get a nice, quick, smooth transition back into that A minor chord. Okay, so let's have a go at playing measure seven and eight through together now. One, two, three. So once we've played measure eight, we just go back to the beginning and we play through measures one to six once more. So we'd play. But then when we get to the end of measure six there, the second time we then jump to measures nine and 10, which just completes that A melody section. So measure nine, we're just playing on the beat. One, two, three. Beat one is this open E string. So easy enough, no fingers on. When we then come to beat two, we want the G string at the fourth fret. We use the third finger for that, but the C string will be ringing there from the previous measure, measure six. And we don't really wanna hear those two notes together because they don't really work. And that open C wouldn't be part of this E7 chord that this is essentially based around. So as you put that third finger onto the G string at the fourth, try and just let the sort of pad of the finger underneath just touch the C string just to stop it ringing, okay? So as you put it on, stopping the C string, muting that there. But then into beat three, lift it back off again because we will want to hear the C string when we play the double stop of C string second with E string fourth. Play those on beat three. And that E string fourth is melody, so we do want to hear that. Okay, so just that measure, measure nine. 
and then finish off into measure 10 we just play on beat one here let that ring out for the rest of the measure and it's going to be this a minor chord the second finger we'll take the g string at the second everything else comes off as we do that and we play all four strings together and you could play those like i just did with an arpeggio pick or you could kind of strum through them or just play them together whatever you prefer okay so play those two together nine and ten nice so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now one two three So on to the B melody section now. This is really gonna test your left hand dexterity. This is a cheeky little section. Everything happens very quickly. There's pull-offs, there's quick chord changes. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit naughty. But stick with it, be patient with it. I'll show you how to do it. Um, it's really fun to play. It sounds brilliant when you can get it, but it probably will take a little bit of practice, this section. So the rhythm here for measures 11 all the way through to the end of measure 16 is all eighth notes. So we're playing this continuous eighth note rhythm, one and two and three and. But the way the melody is here, I think it's easier to think of this in kind of two groups of three. So rather than one and two and three and, I think this makes more sense to think of it as one, two, three, four, five, six. We're still in three, four time. It isn't really one, two, three, four, five, six, but because of the melody, this kind of, we have this kind of repeating set of three notes. If we think of it as one and two and three and, which it is, I just think it sounds easier if you think of it as one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, but either way, whatever works for you, try it both ways, but I think in your head if you're thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, it just makes a bit more sense that way. It's still kind of rhythmically the same, what we're doing there, it's just a different way of counting it. Okay, so you'll notice as well, we've got our dynamic symbol there, MF for mezzo forte, so we're playing this B section moderately loud, which is just kind of normal playing volume really. It's not particularly loud, just moderately loud, kind of normal volume. If you remember the A section, we were playing piano or softly, so we played that a little bit softer than how we'd normally play. Now we're just kind of playing at normal volume. So measures 11 and 12 together should sound like this. Okay, so measure 11, we are starting on this E chord, this double stop of E string at the fourth fret and C string at the fourth fret. And we pick those on beat one. And then the and after beat one, we wanna pull that pinky on the E string at the fourth off onto the E string at the second. So the first finger takes that E string at the second, make sure that's on kind of as we play that double stop. So it's ready to receive that pull off there. And then beat two, we take that first finger off and pick the open E. So those first three notes. Okay, and then we kind of just do that again, but without the C string at the fourth. So not a double stop this time on the and after beat two, just the E string at the fourth on its own, but then pull it off onto the second, then open E again. And then into measure 12, we're gonna turn this now into a B7 chord. So the second finger will take that C string at the third. Third finger will take the G string at the fourth. And we play both those notes together, that double stop there on B1. And on B2, we'll add the first finger onto the E string at the second. Just do that now as we need it. So pick that there on the and after beat one. And then on beat two, we're gonna to go to the open A string, but we'll keep these fingers on as we do that. So we'll pick that open A. And then on the and after beat two, we're gonna to come to the A string at the fourth fret. So the pinky will take that, but then as you pick it, lift that first finger over onto the A string at the second, because the next thing we're gonna do is pull that pinky off onto that A string second. 
Okay, so then the last note there of that measure, the and after beat three, is just the open A. So that first finger that we've pulled off onto, just take that first finger off to then play the open A. So I'll play those two measures again quite slowly. Okay, but at sort of tempo, it sound more like... So it is quite cheeky, um, but it sounds really cool. It's really fun to play. So stick with it, keep practicing it, try and get that coordination so it all sounds nice and clean. And when you've got it, honestly, it's really rewarding. So let's have a go at playing those two measures, 11 and 12, through together now. One, two, three. So measures 13 and 14 are just the same as measures 11 and 12, we just repeat those two measures. And then into measure 15, this begins the same way as measure 11. So we play our double stop of E string fourth, C string fourth, pull off onto the second fret, then onto the open E. But now we've got a little change here, we're gonna do this A string at the fourth, so the pinky will take that and then we'll pick the A string at the second. First finger goes on, pinky comes off, and then the open A, so first finger comes off for that note there. So just that measure there, measure 15. Okay, so as we're playing the A string notes, the second half of this measure, I'd probably just keep that third finger on so it can just ring over those notes. Okay, and you can see there as well at the start of, we're kind of on the and after beat two, that A string at the fourth, you can see the crescendo bar just starting there. So as we play these through note, three notes, and then into the next measure, measure 16, we're gradually increasing the volume as we're playing here. So we're already playing mezzo forte, so I'll just be increasing this to kind of forte, so by the end of this little section, we're playing kind of loud, okay? So just that measure again. But gradually increasing the volume of those last three notes, and then into measure 16, we continue this run of single note picks, as I say, getting gradually louder. So we come on beat one to the A string at the fifth with the pinky, and then the A string at the third, second will take that, then the second fret, first finger will take that. And then jump up the pinky to the eighth fret on the A string, and then play that on the end after beat two. And then seventh fret, third finger, and then fifth fret, first finger. Okay, so as we're playing those notes, we're getting gradually louder, but you can see at the start of measure 16 here, that little word writ, short for ritardando, because we're gradually gonna slow things down here as well. So as we're playing this run of single note picks, we're slowing the tempo down, which is kind of a blessing as well, because it's quite tricky to move the hand up into this position, so that's quite a good bit of composition work there. Thanks, Cornelius. So, if we play those two measures together, kind of with the dynamics and that slow down through measure 16, it should sound like this. Okay, maybe even slow it down a bit more than that. Okay, so we'll have a go at playing those two measures through together now, but for the play along, we won't bother with those dynamics or that kind of slow down of the tempo. Just to keep things simple, we'll just play it all kind of without those bits. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. One, two, three. So on to measures 17 and 18 now, they should sound like this. Okay, so we're breaking that eighth note rhythm now just to kind of slow things down and aid that transition back into the A melody section, which we'll play after this. So beat one of measure 17, and we're just playing on beat one and beat three of this measure. So beat one is this A string at the 14th fret, which we'll use the pinky 
to pick there. That's a bit of a leap to get there from where we were, which was at the A string at the fifth fret. That was the end of measure 16. So to get up to the 14th fret, move the hand up fairly quickly. But remember, we are doing this ritardando. We are slowing things down here. So that sort of helps get into this position. But get yourself in there for beat one. And this is kind of like the peak of the crescendo. So as we've been increasing the volume through measure 16, this first beat of measure 17 is kind of the peak of that crescendo. So nice and loud on that pick. And then as we get to beat three, you can see the beginning there of the decrescendo bars. So as we play the next notes, we're gonna bring that volume back down again, and we're still slowing things down as we do that. So beat three is this A string at the 11th, so the third finger will take that, and we'll pick that just a touch quieter. And again, we're slowing the tempo down as we're going. Then into measure 18, we'll play beat one, is this A string at the seventh fret, the first finger will take that. We'll play that a little bit softer than that previous note. And then the next one on beat three, we'll play softer again. So that's the A string at the fifth. So we're slowing things right down into that point, playing softly as we get there, so that we can get that nice smooth transition back into that A melody section. Okay, and notice there that on beat three of measure 18, we move the hand down so that the pinky plays that A string at the fifth. That seems counterintuitive from where we are. We're playing the A string at the seventh on beat one. It kind of makes sense. You think, oh, maybe just move the first finger down to the fifth fret. But we always want to be doing kind of predictive chording. We're always thinking about the next thing that we're going to be doing. That's how we get these kind of smooth transitions and get smooth flow through a performance of a piece of music. Always think about what's coming next. So because we've got a bit of a gap there between beat one and beat three of measure 18, we've got the time, we've got the space to move the hand into a position, which is gonna be better for the start of the next measure, measure 19. So if we think about where we're gonna go next, once we've played beat three of measure 18, A string the fifth, we're then gonna go into measure 19, which is just the start of the A melody section once again, which is gonna be this A minor chord. So by bringing the pinky, down to the fifth fret, we can see the hand is in the right region here. We can even be getting these two fingers ready in position to play that A minor chord on beat one of measure 19. So always thinking ahead, always thinking about what's coming next. Okay, so let's have a go at playing that measure 17 and 18 through together now. One, two, three. So onto the C section now, all we're doing here is just repeating the A melody section through once again. So nothing new to learn. We know everything we need to know for this piece now. We're just playing through that A melody once more, but we're playing it as if it's a second run through. So we don't play that kind of measure seven and eight. We just play sort of the measures nine and 10 at the end of this section, okay? So the last play through of the A melody, the C section would sound like this. So that brings us to the end of this arrangement. There's plenty of challenge here in this short little piece, uh, lots of little tricky bits to wrap your fingers around, but it's worth sticking with, you know, persevere with it, because once you have mastered this piece, you will have made big improvements in your left hand of dexterity that will really help you on your ukulele journey. So please be patient with it, because it is a fun one to play once you've got it as well. It's really rewarding, and as I say, just really good for that left hand technique okay so i hope you enjoy it have fun with it take care and i'll see you next time all right guys so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun this is a gorgeous piano piece that translated to the ukulele so so well and it's just a lot of fun to play now before we wrap up i do want to give you a friendly reminder that if you did want to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records that was available at this link right here or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for a little flower. Also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer, so you can literally hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning this tune, and we'll catch you in the next 
lesson. Take care.